Hello and welcome. This is Matthew. I hope you're all doing well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to write the codes to run your KNN algorithm using Jupyter Notebook. Okay, in Python. So in my previous video, I was talking about the fundamentals of KNN, major concepts in it, distances and trees, and various types of distances and various types of trees, and which to use when in a given context. So in case if you have not watched my previous videos regarding KNN, distances or trees, I would highly recommend you to watch those videos and I'm providing the link to those videos in the description. All right, so with that, let's begin and let's see how you can write the code for KNN algorithm in a very simple way. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me start with the Jupyter Notebook and I've opened a fresh Jupyter Notebook here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get the basic libraries required for me to run the KN algorithm. So obviously I'll need NumPy, NumPy as NP, and I will need Pandas. And of course I'll need Matplotlib. So I'm importing Matplotlib. Friends, this matplotlib uh, we need for pictorial representation and as you know numpy is for array processing and pandas is for data frames and series, right? So I'm also getting one more package for my visualization which is Zborn, which is also very helpful to get good pictures out and finally I'm going to get my notebook. This is for better representation, right? So I've got all my basic required libraries installed. Now I'm going to get my data set pulled into Jupyter. So how do I do it? So I'm just making naming it as data set pd dot read csv file and I'm going to get my data set. Yeah, store here. So I'm going to get this dot d dot csv course in inverted commas right so i've got my data set ready so i'm gonna quickly run a check uh, by calling the heads of the data so it's pretty much good so it's user id gender age and uh, purchased so i'm gonna just quickly run data set dot info to get a holistic idea of the data set yeah so it's 400 uh, there are no null values so it's everything full and beautiful and uh, i've got integer and uh, my gender is object which is male and female the remaining things are okay everything seems to be okay so now i can go ahead and <clears throat> declare my x and y so i'm gonna do that right away x is equal to data set dot i lock and I need all the rows, and but I need only gender, male, and estimated salary. So, friends, this data set is uh, regarding a social networking ad where I have captured the information about the gender of the person, age of the person, and the estimated salary. And I'm also going to model whether he has purchased a particular product or not. And this is my why, by the way. I really want to understand the propensity of a of a customer buying a particular product given these features, right? Gender, age, and estimated salary. So I really don't need user ID because it's a unique value which may not give me much of an information. So I'm knocking this off and I need gender, age, and estimated salary as my X. So I'm gonna do that. So I need it from gender and the estimated salary right so x dot head if i just want to quickly pull so that's fine so now i'm going to put x in an array x dot x dot values right so that's going to make it an array which is beautiful okay so so far so good and now what i really need is you know i've got something called so again if i'm calling x I've got this first column, which is in text or in string. I'd need to convert that uh, probably into zeros and ones. So 
A quick way to do it is to use the dummies function, which is uh, it is an equivalent of um, say one hard encoding. So, but that that doesn't work on um, arrays. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a row here, and x is equal to pd dot get dummies and x right. So um, I'll need to probably load the code from the beginning so that there's no confusion. Absolutely. So I've got that done and I see that, you know, it is one hot encoded now. It's beautiful and it is an array now. So let me go ahead and declare what's my Y, right? So Y is equal to data set dot I lock. And here we need to know that this is my Y, right? And I really don't need this part. So I'm just going to take purchased. So that's gonna be minus one for me. So that's the last one. And I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely make this as to arrays, right? So why if I call, I'll get to see what is the array here. Okay, so that's perfect and it's working. Now it's the crucial time where I need to split the data set, right? So I'm gonna make a split here. I'm really gonna call my my trains test split from SQLN model. So I'm going to call import learn dot model underscore selection at strain test and split. Right. So, ooh, where did I make the mistake? Okay, I did not put import. Okay, I want to import that import train test and split import sklearn oh sorry Silly mistakes okay so now i'm going to declare x train x test y train and my y test right is equal to um the same library i'm calling right Okay, okay, so I'm gonna call x, y, and test size, I'm gonna put that as 25%, and obviously I want that to be random, so random state, I'll just put in the number, it doesn't matter, so I'm just putting this 42, okay? So my job is done in terms of splitting the data, I've got a beautiful split available. Now what I really need is to call for the um, library which can help me to bring kin and uh, neighbors, right? So from sklearn dot neighbors import k neighbors classifier. SK learn neighbors. Okay, I missed an edge here. I hope that'll sort. K neighbors class. Oh, I have an extra S. You see, the kind of problems you'll create if you're not careful, right? Okay, so now I've got that, and I'm gonna sync it to KNN, and I'm assigning it to a variable and say canon classifiers so i can either just leave it for the default value right or i can do some sort of a adjustment in the default parameter so let's look at it how do you do that so maybe you can get all these things inside and then let's say how you will manage the entire show so i'm going to get all the parameters oops okay. So let me get all the parameters in here. So neighbors, I want files, fine. And I don't really need this. Weights, I'm leaving it as uniform. So you have two options, either to make it distance or uniform. So if you make it as distance, and obviously it is going to assign some more weights to the nearest neighbors, and otherwise uniform weights across. So I'll call them, you can either put auto or you can just say carry trees or ball trees, so we'll start off with KD trees, right? So KD trees, um, 
and leaf size is 30. Okay, so you know you need to have 30 leaves. It's okay. P is equal to two. Minkowski is um, Minkowski is what I'm using. So that's that's typically going to take Euclidean distance. And params uh, params are not required because I've already declared it. And n jobs is the number of CPUs you need to use. I can always put it as minus one, so it go in full throttle, right? Okay, now what? It's throwing an error. Unrecognized KD trees. KD trees. KD trees. Sorry. <laughs> KD tree. Right. Okay. So I've my canon is done. Have to call it so the algorithm is done okay so now my time is to fit the model so canon dot i'm fitting the model and i'm using my x train variable and y train right so these are the variables i want to use to fit my model so yes it does fit the model now so all i need to do now is canon dot i'm going to predict it right so predict what predict using my x test right so it's actually the prediction also is completed right so i can actually name this as y fred it's easy you can call it later right so now uh, what i really need to look at is I've, I've fit the model i've got the predictions done now it's my turn to look at what's the accuracy of the model so how do you do the accuracy of the model it's very simple right all i need is from the escalon metrics i want to get my classification report and class uh, and confusion metrics so i'm just going to go ahead and import sklearn sklearn dot metrics right so for, okay i know the mistake i'm being extremely careless here and i'm going to import so classif classification report and confusion matrix right so what's the problem here what's the problem i don't understand yeah beautiful i missed a comma confusion matrix classy classification what's the problem import Classification Classification report, yes, and confusion matrix. Escalon ah, from there's a problem, right? So I've got that, I've got that. So I'm gonna print my classification report. Uh, classification by using the classification report right and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do how right so I've got my beautiful white test and my white red right so I'm gonna compare these two things and I'm gonna get a classification report so now what now what? Okay, now what? Yes, beautiful, beautiful. So I've got my classification done. So this is my classification report. So I can even put this report. Um, oh no, let me not do that. So that's gonna be a spoiler. I don't want spoilers in this game. So I've got my classification done. So I've got my FI scores here, my Accuracy is about 82 percentage, right? So Canon, when I'm running Canon, that's giving me an apple, um, overall accuracy of about 82 percent. Of course, I can run a cross validation in here, right? So cross validation can obviously help me to get my scores right, right? So for that, you know, I'm gonna import from model selection cross val score, right? From sklearn dot model underscore selection import cross file score 
So I've got the cross files code here, so now I'm asking it to print print my maybe cross val right so cross val score and I want my cross val score between what my cross val score of of course my algorithm scanning and then white red whitest and white red right beautiful beautiful whitest whitest and white red what's the error giving me let's look at the error and try and solve it okay so this is this is not giving me the required shape right so what i really need to do here is to probably reshape to minus one and one run it reshape dot that's going to sprint my gentleman for me and then I'm going to print the same stuff but I would really want to have the mean accuracy right so I'm, I'm really interested in that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert np dot mean code to certainly get my mean scores done so now what's the problem now what's the problem np dot mean yes so that means you know i've got an average score of about 82 which is there and this is my cross val score right so i can see there's an important thing which i have merely forgotten here it is cv is equal to say 10 i put okay so by default if you don't provide the cv value that's going to take it as five that's a default value so this is 10 it's beautiful so 10 times the cross validation it splits and then you get your overall accuracy is about 82 percent which is not bad so friends this is how you generally do your canon algorithm i hope you understood it and this is the line by line code which we can use and I'm, I'm providing the codes for you so that you can easily pick it up from here and do your processing right so thank you so much for watching this video if you really like my videos uh, please do come and visit my channel very often uh, you will get updates on new algorithms which I have not covered so far in my videos. Thank you so much. You all have a great day and um, thanks for watching.